Hi there. In this question, we're going to go over a basic LC matching network for a given load. This question specifically states that the load is 8 minus J12 times 10 to the negative third Siemens. It's a 50 ohm transmission line and the frequency is 1 gigahertz. We're given two circuit options that we're allowed to choose from. We have a series inductor and a shunt capacitor, or a series capacitor and a shunt inductor. So, let's first convert our load from admittance to an impedance. So we know big Y is equal to 8 minus J12 times 10 to the negative third Siemens. Don't forget to put your parentheses around there when you're typing this in your calculator. Uh, big Y sub L, right, your load. Uh, your impedance now is Z sub L, which is equal 1 over Y sub L. And now we want to normalize it. In general, you use large capital uh, letters for non-normalized values, and to normalize it, you bring it back to little z. Um, I have a tendency to just know which one it is and not follow this notation uh, by accident. It's a bad habit, so if you see that in here, I'm sorry. That being said, so Z sub L equals ZL divided by 50. And if we take this number and take the inverse of it and then divide by 50, we should get 0 0.77 plus 1.15J. Now let's graph this on the Smith chart. So on the Smith chart, um, a few basic rules we should go over. First is over here, uh, well, okay, so you have your Smith chart, the standard one that starts over here with small circles and it gradually increases uh, towards the left. And for that, the center is 1, the left is ZL, or Z, I should say not L really, it's just a point, it's equal to infinity, or 0, it's a short, and over here, where the circles are really small, this is where Z equals infinity. And let's look at, now let's look at the minage chart. It's a 180 degree flip, essentially. And so that being said, that means your Y over here is infinity. And your Y over here, it's at these points, really, uh, is zero. And the way I like to think about it, very simple way, and I believe a lot of people think about it, is just resistance. Your impedance is like your resistance. And um, this is similar. So if you have zero resistance, this is a short circuit. And if you have infinity resistance, it's similar to an open circuit. And it's, you know, if you have an open circuit, you don't have any conductance. There's, you know, no power being transferred. Uh, and short, you have infinity conductance. You know, it's a short circuit. Uh, that being said, this will help you with the numbering, especially if you're colorblind. You know, uh, these blue and red charts can sometimes possibly be a pain. Um, we know our Z sub L normalized is 0.77 plus 1.15 J. You have to normalize it to use it on the Smith chart. So this point, which I've already grabbed on uh, working it before, uh, you should be able to realize that, oh hey, it's 0.77, so I'm going to be left of this one, right? We just declared that this is zero and this is one, so it's going to be somewhere around here. Actually, I'll just grab it again. And 1.15J, uh, this is 1 for the J, and this is 1.2, so it's about in the middle of here and actually in between these two. So, yeah, that seems right. There we go. So this is our Z sub L. Or normalized, so small z. Uh, with that, we have the circuit. Let's look at that. So I should have mentioned, and I believe most people know, this is the positive uh, reactance plane, or you know, positive j, and this is the negative j in the admittance or uh, impedance circles. So let's look at this. Um, we have a series capacitor or a series inductor immediately after the load. Um, that's going to be the first thing to affect the circuit, or you know, from the load. It's going to 
see? Um, so a series inductor will move it this direction towards z equals infinity. And that's not what we, what we want. We want to get near 1. So capacitor is going to bring it down this direction. And, uh, you know, it'll continue if you have a large enough capacitance all the way around. So you can traverse quite a way. But we have another limitation. First, we found out we'd need a series capacitance over the inductor, or, yeah, capacitor. But, uh, so with that, we're choosing circuit B. Now that we've chosen circuit B, we will look at our other limitation. We now have a shunt inductor. Okay, so a shunt device is going to traverse these circles. Uh, the circles on the left, your admin circles. And these admin circles are very similar to your Smith chart circles. And in fact, the way I like to think about it, um, I don't even think about any of the numbers. The only way I think about it is that, hey, I, I like to generally stay in the impedance plane, but you have to traverse the admin circles. So uh, we want to get this point one, and we know we can do that along these two points of our capacitor, from here and here. The series capacitor can bring us to either one of these two points. But um, a shunt device, a capacitor, regardless of its shunt or series, will make you move down, and an inductor will make you move up. So, we already know that we're limited to a shunt inductor. So that's going to make us move up, and this is the only way to go up from our capacitor and get there. If we tried putting uh, something in shunt here, we would need a shunt capacitor on top of our series capacitor to get from here to here but we only have a shunt inductor, so we have to traverse to here and move up from there. So knowing that, we are going to call this point Z sub C, and it will also have a Y sub C, and this is all normalized, right? And our final point is 1. Alright. So let's write what Z sub C is. Hopefully you can read it, you know, you should know that the real part isn't changing, right? So we already know that we're going to have a 0.77. And the real reason why the real part isn't changing is because we're just traversing with the capacitor, right? So if we're just traversing with the capacitor, um, a single capacitor at this point, we know we're going to follow this line, which is where, you know, the reactance is changing. But we also know that we're below. Uh, zero, so it's definitely a negative uh, impedance as far as the J component, and that value is approximately 0.42 J if you look on the circle. Now I, I usually write it down because some of this text will get in the way. This is 0.5 line, this red one right here, this is the 0.4 line, so you can see that if you follow this up, it's a little bit more than 0.4. So now that we have our Z sub C, let's look at the difference between these two points. This is what our capacitor has to change our uh, load, essentially, to. So we know that the difference between these two points is approximately 1.57J. Right? This is still normalized. So let's put it back into uh, a non-normalized form by multiplying by 50. And what are we going to do with this? 1.57J uh, times 50. Well, let's uh, change it into an actual capacitor value. We know the operating frequency and we know probably from when you were doing phasers, or sorry, not phasers, um, if you had to turn a large circuit into a black box, you know, you had reactances, and that was the one that equals JWC for your capacitor. So it's similar to this. We'll take this value, um, which I'm going to just label as X is C, and we're going to invert it, and we're going to have a W, and this 1.57J times 50, and your W is 2 pi times 1 times 10 to the ninth for 1 gigahertz. So, uh, if you calculate this out, you should get about 2 picofarads, or 2 times uh, 10 to the negative 12. That's your capacitor value. That's your series capacitor value. 
So now that we have our series capacitor value, we still have to find our inductor value. We know our Z sub C is 0.77 minus 0.42 J. Uh, let's change that to an admittance. Uh, this, is, this now is normalized again, right? Let's just realize that. Um, and this Y sub C should be normalized. Now, here's a sanity check. We know that we chose this point specifically so that it's hitting the 1 on the admin circle. That way we can traverse up to 1 with no uh, imaginary component. So if you take the inverse of this, you should get 1 plus or minus something. And we do. We get 1 plus 0.546J. So even though you know we're on the negative side of this, with the if you've seen with Smith charts and you don't have these admin circles on here, you do the 180 degree flip. So as you can imagine, doing a 180 degree flip, uh, the bottom is now positive J. But the cool thing is, the inductors and capacitors always just inductors always move up, capacitors always move down, within uh, regards if you're on the shunt or a uh, series device, right? So now that we have our Y sub C, we know that our Y sub M, or the match that we're trying to get to, which we'll call the center, uh, is equal to 1, right? There shouldn't be no imaginary component. And this works exactly like the capacitor. We know the difference. It's 0.546J. So we know our XL, as many use in you know, general reactance equations, is equal to JWL. So we know XL equals JWL. But for XL, this difference of 0.546J is still in terms of admittance, right? So let's take the inverse of it. Alright, now with that we will now use this as our X of L uh, because it is in impedance. And let's solve for this. We'll get XL by W, which is 2 pi times frequency, which is 1 times 10 to the 9th, uh, it should equal L. Ah, but wait, forgot something. We still have to normalize it, so let's multiply it by 50 on top, right? Um, or sorry, not normalize it, you know, uh, bring it back to actual terms. Um, this 1 over divided by 0.546 is not normalized yet, but we need to normalize it. So take X of L, which is the inverse of the difference here, multiply it by 50, um, and then divide by omega, and we should get our inductor value. And if I'm correct here, this should be approximately 91.57, and divide by 2 pi times 10 to the 9th, we get... 1.45e to the negative 8th, which equals 14.5 nanohenries. Um, and that is correct. So now we have our capacitor, which is 2 picofarads, and our inductor, which is 14.5 nanofarads for the circuit uh, in this equation right here. So there we go.